everyone. It is August 12, 2018. If someone sent me this article, thank you. I, I can't remember. Texas cities dominate list of U.S. boom towns. Yes, I have some subscribers in Texas and they talk about the influx of Californians and a lot of others from around the country. Why? Because there's employment in Texas. So Texas dominated the list of U.S. boom towns and Austin scored the top spot. Who did this study, the research? Magnify money. Money, money, money. Americans are flocking to and prospering in Texas. According to a Magnify Money senior analyst, she said, the Lone Star State metros represented one-third of the top 15 spots on their rankings. Five of the six Texas cities on the list placed in the top 11. We wanted to find out where Americans are gathering now to take advantage of growing prosperity and improved lifestyles to achieve the American dream. Magnify Money researchers examined the 100 largest U.S. metropolitan statistical areas over the five-year period from 2011 to 2016, researchers focused on business growth, population and housing, and workforce and earnings. Boomtown saw the biggest influx of people, work opportunities, and business growth. And Austin jumps way ahead of all of the metros showing the greatest five-year growth in population and housing. And Austin, you earned a perfect score of 100. Okay. Um, I'm just going to focus on the top 10 boom cities, boom towns. Austin, Provo, Raleigh, Charleston, Nashville, Denver, Dallas, Boise, San Antonio, McAllen. Did you need the states stated? Austin, Texas, Provo, Utah, Raleigh, North Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, Nashville, Tennessee, Denver, Colorado, Dallas, Texas, Boise, Idaho, San Antonio, McAllen, Texas. I have stated in, in a lot of videos talking about America 2050, the mega regions. And I have said that it's easy to shuffle people around, especially when they're led by the carrot money. So if you impoverish um, a whole lot of Maine and people can't find work then they have to go somewhere where they can find work and they can find work in the Piedmont Atlantic region or the Texas Triangle or other mega regions so the top, uh, or the 11 mega regions, Cascadia. This is the reshaping of the United States. All of the gray area, eventually, you will not see people living in these gray areas. You will see people only living in the mega regions. So we have Cascadia, Northern California, Front Range, Southern California, the Arizona Sun Corridor, Texas Triangle, and what else do we have? We've got Great Lakes, and we have the Gulf Coast, Piedmont Atlantic, Florida, and Northeast. This is happening. It continues 
to happen. This plan, the reshaping of the United States, America 2050, Agenda 2030, all of it continues even though Trump is in the White House. So I just want to show you that the top 10 boom towns, well, they just so happen to be in mega regions like Austin is in the Texas Triangle. Provo, Utah is in the Front Range mega region. Raleigh, Piedmont Atlantic, Charleston, South Carolina, Piedmont Atlantic, Nashville, Tennessee, a part of the Piedmont Atlantic mega region, Denver, Front Range, Dallas, Texas Triangle, Boise, Idaho, you're going in with Cascadia, San Antonio, Texas Triangle, and McAllen, you're part of Gulf Coast. Employment opportunities exist in your mega regions. Not a coincidence. This is purposeful. This is the way in which you can get rid of an awful lot of people in an awful lot of areas where they can't find work and they're going to have to go into areas like this that, that offer opportunities. And yes, it is rather easy to manipulate people when you're, you're really only concern is one factor, money. But it is absolutely true. You need money to survive. I just want to show you this PDF, which you can download. I didn't. But this is back in 2013. And this is a a real estate advisors company and they do marketing and investment and research and yada 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 but here they are with their well it may be a white paper um, talking about the mega regions and well when you are advising people let's say on where to invest where to um, invest in real estate, then you're going to have to know something about uh, where the best places are to invest. And isn't it interesting that this real estate advising company understands that the best place to invest mega regions? Oh, Absolutely. They actually go by the Emerging Mega Regions America 2050 map. And while I didn't do any research on other real estate advising companies, and I'm sure they're all following the same mega region plan. Eleven mega regions are emerging in the United States. These mega regions are characterized by job creating industries and improving housing markets. These regions are set to dominate U.S. real estate demand in the next decade. So this was 2013. U.S. mega regions. Infrastructure investments such as utilities, roads, and public transportation can require billions of dollars in decades of planning, economic growth, corporate location preferences and demographic patterns are forecast long in advance. Corporations are providing employment in the mega regions. 
And don't think that these CEOs of these corporations, that they don't know about the United Nations Agenda 2030 plan, America 2050 plan, and they bring their corporations, they bring the employment to the mega regions. And they gut other areas of the country. So this company is going by the America 2050 plan, a national infrastructure planning and policy program by the Regional Plan Association. The program was initiated in 20, uh, 2005 and has published research and policy recommendations regarding the future growth and competitiveness of the United States, particularly in regard to infrastructure planning such as high-speed rail, water, energy planning, and land use. A major focus of the America 2050 plan is the emergence of 11 megaregions that are expected to encompass most of the United States population growth through 2050. Yes, right here. This is the plan. Um, what else do I have for you? The mega regions are expected to account for 85% of new job growth and nearly all positive population growth through 2025. More than a million new jobs are expected to be created in the New York metropolitan area by 2025, with nearly a million in each of Dallas, Los Angeles, and Houston office jobs or Houston, sorry, office jobs will account for about a third of this growth. Real estate investors are already tuning into this trend with 99% of institutional investment in commercial real estate, real estate within the 11 mega regions. It is deliberate. They're building up the mega regions and tearing down all other areas of the United States. People will be forced, forced to move. And that's exactly the intention. You offer, you offer jobs in Cascadia, Front Range, Piedmont, Atlantic regions have strong growth potential within the realm of other global high growth markets throughout the world. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. So if you want to read up on your region, if you're in a region, click on the link below, the U.S. mega regions. Here they are, Front Range, California mega regions, which is northern and southern, Cascadia, Cascadia, the high-tech, uh, large technology-based economy. Manufacturing here in Anderson, which I'll show you in a second. But we've got a lot of corporations offering employment here in the Piedmont Atlantic Uh, mega region, but the Texas Triangle, high growth mega region. The Texas Triangle is entirely in one state, offering the region a huge competitive advantage by making investment and policy coordination much simpler. That's why the Texas Triangle is really your 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 mega region. It's. Uh, it's coming together quite nicely. The triangle includes three of the nation's largest cities, ten, the nation's ten largest cities, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio. It's responsible for most of Texas's economic activity and output. More than two-thirds of all employment in the state of Texas is contained in the triangle, making it very easy to get those uh, Agenda 2030 
plans implemented. One of the major growth drivers is the low cost of living, which attracts households of all income levels to Texas. Cost of living is about 6.2% lower than the U.S. average and almost 50% lower than many coastal cities. The Texas Triangle is 17% less exp expensive in terms of housing than the United States as a whole. And the biggest driver of the triangle is sustained employment growth. I will tell you that all of this is deliberate. All of it is deliberate to attract people to go to these mega regions, to attract techies up to Cascadia, Cascadia, and attract people who have quite a bit of wealth. All you have to understand that everything that is operating here in the United States is being steered by those behind the curtain. And every mega region has its own plans that are being instituted every single day. So Anderson, South Carolina, where I live, is gaining ground as a manufacturing hub. Anderson, Piedmont, Atlantic mega region. And it has grown considerably. That's not a surprise to me. And Anderson, uh, I'm in the town or the city of Anderson, which is within Anderson County. But this is an Agenda 2030 city, along with Greenville, Spartanburg. So, they're just recruiting. You know, it's funny, I was reading this article and, oh boy, um, the town council of Anderson, they are just, you know, applauding themselves, slapping themselves on the back for recruiting so many corporations into Anderson. I don't think they have anything to do with it. These corporations are coming into South Carolina. They knew they were coming into some mega region. And all of it, all of it was planned well in advance. Manufacturing is coming back. They're, they're actually creating schools to train people so that they have an employment, a labor force for these corporations. A new school is going to be opening um, in 2019, which I can't see the, the title of it, but God has been good to Anderson County. Yeah. Uh, well, why don't you think that it's really those who are instituting Agenda 2030. Perhaps your, your uh, what is it called? The Council of Governments. That's what's been good. Not God, but COG. And Anderson County, our COG is the Appalachian Council of Governments that control the governments, the local governments of Anderson, Belton, Ponypath, Iva, Pelza, Pendleton, Star, West, Pelza, and Williamston. So these people who live in these areas believe that they have their local government representing them, but they don't understand that their local town councils are controlled by these Council of Governments that are implementing their own plans 
So just want to show you, and you can check it out for your own area, but local councils of governments implementing United Nations Directed Agenda 21. I will link below to this article, and if you don't know how, how local councils of government are implementing Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 by steering local town council members to do exactly what the council of government members want them to do. If you don't know that that's operating and don't know how it operates, I suggest you read this article. And uh, Brandon Turbville wrote an article about, oh, this might be the article, South Carolina. Oh yeah, South Carolina, Greenville, Anderson, Spartanburg, um, implementing Agenda 21 via the COG. And Yep, South Carolina moves to implement Agenda 21 guidelines. Agenda 21 comes to Greenville, South Carolina. And this these articles were years ago. You've got the Council of Governments, the COG, that's steering everything. And if I if I did an awful lot of research, I could probably find a link to this ACOG, to ICLE, which is the, the uh, local arm of the United Nations. I didn't want to get into all of this. If you, I'm sorry, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you've got to do some research on Agenda 21 slash Agenda 2030 and bring yourself up to speed on how the United Nations is implementing locally the reshaping of the world. It's not just happening in our country. But I thought it was interesting here. ACOG, Board Minutes and Agendas. And for some reason, it stops at 2016. Huh. Well, it's August 2018. Where are your minutes and agendas? Well, I will tell you. I have noticed just my time in Anderson, South Carolina, more, more of the Agenda 2030 signatures um, popping up. And perhaps the ACOG just didn't want to put the board minutes and agendas on, the webs on their website so that the public can actually access them. Maybe they're keeping secret their plans at this point. I thought it was interesting that the assistant police chief, and this is on the Appalachian um, Council of Governments website, they have job opportunities. And the assistant police chief was one of the jobs that was vacant, city of Anderson, I thought the town council, I thought the police chief, or maybe that's the sheriff, I'm sorry. But even the city, you would think that it would go through the town council. Maybe the police chief is not an elected, it's an, appoint, an appointed position. But you have the Appalachian Council of Governments employing the police chief or the assistant police chief. That seems to be a rather, well, let's just say not so transparent process. And I absolutely have no doubt that the the South Carolina Appalachian Council of Governments 
is appointing people that will fulfill their agenda, bringing in the United Nations plan. But here, you know, the Appalachian Council of Governments working with Upstate Transportation Coalition, yes, to bring about transit walkability and trails and bike and uh, pedestrian paths and a new transportation, a long-range transportation plan between Greenville and Pickens and they have one between Anderson and Spartanburg. It's all Agenda 2030. Uh, connecting our future, wow. Ten counties, one upstate South Carolina. Stronger together. This is via the Appalachian Council of Governments. Connecting our future. Well, you can check it out, those of you in South Carolina. But working towards sustainable mobility. They have these conferences. They're working towards sustainable mobility. And among one of the biggest concerns is the auto-dependent region. It's a very auto-dependent region with only 2% of the population using some other means than a car to get where they need to go. We're looking at a future where the car will no longer be. And people will be riding bicycles and walking. That is that's the future. So, anyway, yes, boom, boom cities, boom towns, all within the mega region. I'll link to everything below. Have a great day tomorrow.